I've done many technological innovations and in every one, in order to leapfrog to the next level, you have to study what's gone before. And that means reading a thousand computer science papers. And so we started. We got lucky because on paper 300, it was written by Professor Takeuchi Nanaka and published in the Harvard Business Review, and it described how Toyota worked and Honda worked and 3M worked, small cross-functional teams working so closely together, it, remind, it reminded Takeuchi Nanaka of the game of rugby. And they said, we're gonna call this Scrum Project Management. And they described how the, how the management at these lean companies set up the teams, how they worked with the teams. They were more like investors. You know, they, they gave the teams challenging goals, but then they asked the teams, what do you need to achieve the goal? And they would support the teams and let the teams be autonomous in figuring out how to achieve that. And I said, this is perfect, exactly. It's not only exactly what we do, but it, it shows how the management needs to function. And we can lay that paper on forward management and we can sell them the new process. So that became Scrum. It was all completed by the end of 1993, the formal definition. Uh, our own team ran that formal definition beginning in January of 1994. So fast forward now, in 1995, Easel is acquired by BMARC. I'm really concerned that we have this new, not only this new tooling that is selling pretty well, but this new process. I don't want it, I don't want to lose it. I want to get it out of the company. And so I, I, I called up Ken Schwaber, who was CEO of a project management software company. He wrote Gantt chart software. <laughs> and he sold 300 three-ring bindings to all the big consultancies, IBM, Coopers and Liber, Ernst and Young, uh, Anderson at that time, now Accenture. And I, I brought Ken in to VMark and I said, Ken, you know, that stuff you're selling, it doesn't work. You and I both know it, we've worked together before. Take a look at this scrum thing, it really works. So Ken decided to spend two weeks with the scrum team, and at the end, he said, you're right. So I said, well, how will we do this together then? Because I want you to take this to industry. I'm just internal to the company. I'm, I'm effectively the CTO of the company. I don't have time to go out and do the marketing that's needed. Why doesn't your company take this? Let's make it open source and free. And uh, so Ken, to his credit, within three months, sold off all his traditional business and focused totally on Scrum. So he was responsible for the industrial launch of Scrum. And uh, as I was working inside companies, I'd have Ken working along beside me in the companies. And so now we, have more, we had a lot more research projects uh, to show not only how, uh, you know, the best approach to Scrum, the best patterns to use with Scrum, the best scaling techniques with Scrum. Ken and I did that all the way up to 2001 in the Agile Manifesto meeting. Uh, Ken and I were there, also Mike Beadle, one of the first CEO that took a whole organization to Scrum. Uh, and uh, Ken Beck, and there were four founders of Extreme Programming there, and a bunch of well-known consultants who wrote books. And we debated for the whole first day about what we were doing, and Mike Beadle had read a lean book on front hardware companies. Uh, and the lean hardware companies, a hundred of them, had created this agile consortium. They said, we're gonna call ourselves agile, which is lean plus involving the customer in product creation. Okay, so we convinced by the end of the day, those 17 guys around the table, that what we're all doing together, let's call it Agile. And Arlene, who's sitting here, was the only woman at the Agile Manifesto meeting. She was not allowed in the meetings, but she was at all the social gatherings, all the meals, and she, she got to get the kind of the full dose of <laughs> what was going on. She can share with you that. Uh, 
The next day, the Ash Manifesto itself was written during a coffee break. Mid-morning, we took a break. Nine of the people went out on the ski slope uh, at Snowbird, and eight of us stayed in the room. And the picture of the Agile Manifesto that's on the web is those eight people in the room. And I'm the guy, and my back is kind of in the middle of the group. Martin Fowler is at the front board, on the whiteboard, and he said, you know, in the 10 minutes we have, I want to know, is there anything that we're going to be able to agree on before we leave this meeting? Because all we've been doing is arguing and debating, and we've only agreed on the word agile. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you know, can't we talk about what makes great teams? And then somebody well, said, well, it's all about the people. It's about the individuals and, and the interactions. And someone said, well, what about tools? And one of the other guys said, well, tools usually slow you down. But we probably don't want to ban them. There might, might, there might be something useful. So Martin wrote on the board, why don't we say we value individuals' interactions over process and tools? And then Ron Jeffrey said, and working software, we value over comprehensive documentation. It happened almost as fast as that. And then we got into a long discussion about how do you involve the customer in product creation because that is the <coughs> agile consortium for the hardware and lean companies, okay? Involving the customer, how does that work? So that came out, uh, customer collaboration we value or contract negotiation. And then one of the XP guys said, and responded to change over following a plan because that's the XP mantra, okay? So it was over almost as fast as I've talked about it. The coffee break ended, <laughs> the other nine came, guys came back in, and I remember, they looked at the board and nobody said anything. It was just one of those pregnant moments. And, and Ward Cunningham, probably the most technical guy in the group, was spending many tools that people use to this day, said, that's awesome. And nobody changed a word. Wow. <laughs> now, people have asked me since then, do you think 17 guys in the room could write the Agile Manifesto? And my response has been, no, that's too big a team. But the other nine guys worked it over, and coming into the afternoon, we came up with the principles behind the Agile Manifesto, those 12 principles that kind of explain it a little bit. Okay. And so that was the origin of the Agile Manifesto. At that time, another thing people don't realize is that the only widely deployed processes with Scrum and XP at the time. Everything else was a dream in somebody's eye, right? And so really, Scrum and XP are the father and mother of Agile. Mm -hmm. And another thing people don't know, uh, Jeff McKenna, the first Scrum coach, asked me one time, he said, what effect do you think small talk had on Agile? And I said, well, small talk is 100% responsible for Agile. The first Scrum team at ESO was a small talk team. The first XP team was a small talk team. Martin Fowler, who wrote it on the whiteboard, was a small talk guy. A lot of people don't understand that. That development in the small talk environment is what enabled uh, the Agile Manifesto. And, if, and with the tools we have today, we've yet to get back to as good an environment as we still have with the small talk tools that are still so and so on. So there's a lot of interesting aspects of this that people don't get. Number one, self-organization doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. Uh, number two, uh, scrum means you're lean first, and the definition of lean is your process efficiency is 25% or more. Does anybody know the process efficiency of your scrum team? You know, one person, okay? For those of you who don't know, I can tell you, at GE, they have Lean Six Victim guys that actually get the number, and it was 5% there. So that's, you're probably down there at 5 or 10%. If you can get that officially up over 25%, your production can double in a week. You see that happen in Indian teams. Just tell them what you need to do, and then boom, they do it, and three days later, boom, they're done with a two-week spread. 
So there are these little pieces of things that are fundamental to Scrum that if everybody understood them better in the Azure community, we'd have even more awesome teams than we have today. So I probably use more than 15 minutes for that, right? So I should stop. That's okay, I'll, I'll talk if we waste time. <laughs> I'd like to open it up to questions, comments, and thoughts, because we have a lot of experienced people in here with Scrum. Talk really loud about your questions. Stand up.